Right, so, so can I say something? Absolutely. I like that. I, I agree with that too. I think that your success of any organization, your business, your gym, your team, is uh, hinging on the leadership of it. And so, um, what kind of leader are you? Or what kind of leader are you allowed to be? Or maybe if you're the business owner, are you not allowing your team staff to be leaders? I mean, you have to really decide that. And um, how they re are reacting with the kids in your gym, your staff, or how you are, is going to really be the thermometer in which the health of your team uh, is measured, really. I, I believe that. <clears throat> and I learned a couple things along the way. And one was actually from Muriel Grossfeld in the championship. I got so nervous. Like, you know, I don't, the beam, and it's so skinny. Ugh. So watching our kids, the meat is hinging on whether she makes a national team in the last event's beam, and that would leave the arena. Because I'd be so nervous for this good quality. And yet I, I'm trying to portray confidence to my athlete. And Muriel Grossfeld saw me leave. She was judging me, leave beam when Ken Young was up on the house beam. And uh, I came back after she hit, but Muriel got up, came over, and chewed me on the Chewed me out right on the floor said, you never do that again. You know, your athletes sense that, and what you do is gonna rub off in your, I mean, she, and I, I knew right then, yeah, you know what? The lead is from the top, and how I am, and what, that all filters down. And um, I had a really great compliment one time at a meet where one of our up-and-coming stars, she's now at Penn State, Soraya Musser is <clears throat> definitely gonna be a really good gymnast, and she fell in our Pikes Peak Cup Invitational and stuff. And, uh, one of the coaches in Colorado. He saw how I reacted with her. I didn't yell at her. You know, I just said, encourage her, okay, you know, let's get up. I want you to finish strong. Let's do that. But he came over and he goes, wow. He goes, I don't know what the rumors are about Ariel's, but he kind of goes, I, well, that really impressed me. I thought you were really going to chew her out. You know, and my thought was, you think that, that would have helped? She already fell. <laughs> you know, and then the started in May. Now I have now damage control, not punishment. You know, and that's just been our philosophy in our gym. And so hence, I think the kids do want to come back. They want to come back because of the way they're treated. One of the things that makes me the most sad is when the kids don't come to the gym anymore and run to the trampoline. You know when that happens? When they, when they, the, the, and you'll see, some of the whole time they're going to come in and they're going to sit on the mat and they're going to wait for strip. God, that breaks my heart. Because when they were little, they came in. Yeah. <laughs> You know, <laughs> bouncing on the trampoline, and they're like, <laughs> I just, I love that. And next thing you know, they're years later, they're just so young. And so, it is that fine line, because some of my staff say, the team kids are on the trampoline, and practice, and I'm like, yeah, I know, they're not supposed to do that. <laughs> you know, like, please, do seat wars, do something. You know, but I, it's like, I want to encourage them, you know, gymnastics should be fun. But we do know that kids quit when it's not fun anymore. And it's not fun anymore in this sport when A, you're not learning anything new anymore, or now you just can't manage your fear. When those two things happen, they're leaving. And it may not be today, but they're leaving soon. Because it's not that kind of sport. You know, the thing that makes it enticing for you, for example, as a coach is, I think I can get another half twist out of that dang thing. You know, I, can, you know, I, I think I get that with her. We can do it in a pike, or we can do it in a line. I mean, the, the allure that you can always do something more, doesn't that draw you in? Because it does me. I mean, that's one of the reasons why I have all the gadgets that I invented. Just the allure of, oh, I think I can, I can teach that skill. And I literally have certain skills. I don't want to quit my career until I've taught somebody <laughs> that thing. You know what? For me. It's for me. It's not, you know, somebody else may not see it. The coolest move I've ever done, uh, we don't have any girls doing it. And um, never had a girl compete it. We trained it and trained it and trained it, and I'll show you, you know, if you want to see what it is. <coughs> someday, you wouldn't show me this move. Someday, we were competing against each other. He goes, I got a move. Yeah. And what is it? I'm not showing you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just sharing that with you because that's yeah, true. I do have <laughs> to. I'm not sure. Now, I, I granted, I'm getting to the point where I'm running out of time. I'm really running out of time. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's it's completely, totally unique, and gosh darn it, somebody's got to do it. But um, it drives me, you know, it just it really, really motivates me. And I think 
that that kind of energy rubs off on my staff, you know, and I'm encouraging them. Um, I didn't show you one of the things one of my coaches, Zach Bates, created this idea of a stretching bar thing, which I really want to show you this morning. Um, and I went ahead and made it, but it's his idea, so I want to make sure I give we him have to credit. Do that. Go, so we yeah. And um, a lot of drills, like when I talk in lectures, I'll say, hey, you know, my coach Jason came up with this drill. I really try to do that with my staff, is to give credit where credit is due, because, you know, ultimately, everybody kind of thinks it's because I own areas. Oh, Tom's so great. So actually, really, I know I'm getting credit, credit anyway, and I don't want to steal it, the thunder from them. I don't want to do that. I want them motivated to come to work. And so that begins the culture, you know? We've got to create that kind of culture within our gym of sharing. And, and, and we have sent, four of my staff came to this boot camp last, last time, the young girls. They're young girls. And I've watched them more motivated now. And then they did Vail Congress, you know, Region 3 Congress and some and they went to Chris Burdett's lectures and Tammy Vick's lectures and stuff. And it is an investment. I granted it's expensive. But I'm investing in them because I'm seeing the return now because I see juice flowing again and they're excited and kids are more excited. That ultimately, I'm going to make money from that because kids are going to stay in. They're going to be more happy. That's a good thing for us. OK. I want to you say one, more, great point. I want to say one more thing. <clears throat> I want to talk about what we talked about this morning. We're in Starbucks, and uh, the guys work this. I can't, I can't think of his name right now. Yeah, they had to reinvent Starbucks, and I said, "Man, that's a, it's a great read, and it's really testimony to what I tell our college kids all the time. No such thing as maintaining. You do not maintain. If you're maintaining, you're going backwards because someone's going forward. All right, and in that whole notion of maintaining or just coming in, I'm going to do what I always do." you're going downhill. And that's what happened to their organization, and we talked about it. We both experienced that as coaches. I'm comfortable with where I'm at. I'm not progressing mentally to move to the next step or find another way or do something a little more interesting for the kids or different. And ultimately, both of us had the same result. Whoa, what happened just now? What happened this year? You know, we didn't move forward. We didn't, we didn't continue to grow. So, you know, even at my ancient age, I'm always looking for a little better mousetrap, a little better way. Because if I don't find it, boredom sets in, right? I stagnate, I'm going down. And, and that is, that's one thing I know to be the truth. Yeah, it is true. So, but I remember also about the mousetrap, there's also not a lot of secrets out there. There really are. I mean, the things that you're learning, you know, this weekend is, you know, just other people also have ideas that you've shared. It's not like it's like, oh, well, you may, somebody may have had an aha moment and we're happy for you. But for the most part, you know, oh yeah, we used to do that. Or, yeah, why don't we do that anymore? Or, oh yeah, that's just an extension of this thing that we already did. So it's not like there's somebody out there that has this magical secret, we just have to find out who they are. And everything in our lives are gonna get so much easier. That's just not true, but I've had people um, at some of my congresses come up to me and said, well, you know, Lynn, I read the course description and you had all these, you know, it sounded so good about the magical things we're going to learn on bars and I've got these high school kids and I thought you were going to show me something that was just going to make it way easier and I'm like, they're high school kids? Nothing's going to make that easier. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I, I alluded to, there is, and they really thought, well, there's some secret there. You must have it, Yoda. And, and the reality is it's hard work. It's hard work. And there's no getting around it. There really is no getting around it. Yeah, um, so it's hard to go in there and watch that conditioning every day and, and make, it, make it right. Or physically help them through. It's hard, hard work. I know that I went to um, uh, Jeff Metzger's business boot camp about seven times um, because he let, he let me pitch his. Uh, I was selling a software program at the time, the gym, and I had a set time clock. That I sell. So he let me, you know, be there and sell my wares and stuff. And he and I are friends. And, and uh, but I remember the first time I went, I actually went through the whole one once. And I was just, and he gives you a book this fat because there's so many facets to business. And I was overwhelmed. I was just so so overwhelmed that I felt when I came back home kind of paralyzed. Mm -hmm. What do I do? What What do I do first? It seems like I'm doing everything. You know, so it, it whittled away at my self-confidence a little bit. And then I got over it. But then I realized, you know, when I go into a situation like that, I've got to come out and say, well, what are three things I can do? Let's just deal with that. What's the first thing? 
give me one <coughs> and then two other things. That's it. So I want your mind, you could even use it on a piece of paper. You have a level five team, if that's what you gotta coach, or level eight. You know what those skills are. You should now have one, two, and three blocks as to what three things or two things is a new drill you're now gonna incorporate as a side station that you now feel is relevant that your level five team should start doing, but they're not doing now maybe, or they used to and you've gotta get back on it. Start with that concept. Do that for your fives, your sixes, your sevens, your, do it for each level and determine what side station, and if you're not coaching them, that's why you've gotta go back and share that information because eventually they're coming to you. And so the thing I really believe in is what I like this weekend of, and he meant, made great mention of it yesterday, is it was 4 o'clock in the afternoon. He said, do you remember at 10 o'clock this morning we did that little thing? And here it is again, right? It, does, it all fits if you have people at that lower level doing the right things, which in our case, you know, I'm not coaching those kids. I'm waiting for that. And then I'm going to get them later, and I need them to have those kinds of things. And so that's what you should, we would hope that you would walk away from this weekend is to know, well, what two things or three things could each of those teams be working toward that when I get them, they're not gonna be like, I've never done this before. And we're even new, you can even see some of our kids are like, what? Because even my staff, until we decided, we're doing this bar boot camp thing, because I'm not in the gym every day anymore doing that. And they started drifting away from the things that we used to do all the time. It's just part of our program. So it's been a great reminder.